Thank you for joining us as we present another spirit-filled message by RCCG ICC UK, the home of kings and priests. Please grab your Bible, notepad and your pen as you're about to listen to this transformational message. God bless you. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Okay, could you just put that very quickly on the screen for me? Um, yes. Yeah, please, please take a seat. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 12, I'm going to read because I mentioned something and I always like to back up what I've said through the word of God. Um, I'm going to read from verse 1. It says, don't let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your creator. Honor him in your youth before you grow old and no longer enjoy it. Enjoy living. It will be too late then to remember him when the light of the sun and the moon and stars is dim to your old eyes and there is no silver lining left among the clouds. Your limbs, verse 3, your limbs will tremble with age and your strong legs will grow weak. Your teeth will be too few to do their work and you will be blind too. When your teeth are gone, Keep your lips tightly closed. When you eat, even the chirping of birds will wake you up. But you yourself will be deaf and tuneless with a quavering voice. You will be afraid of heights and of falling. White-haired and, wh and withered, dragging along without any sexual desire, you will be standing at death's door. And as you near your everlasting home, the mourners will walk along the streets. Yes, verse 6, remember your creator now while you are young, before the silver cord of life snaps and the golden bowl is, is broken. Don't wait until the water jar is smashed at the spring and the pulley is, is, is broken at the well, which is speaking of death. For then... The dust will return to the earth and the spirit will return to God who gave it. All is meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Hallelujah. Now, the reason I read this thing is because the word of God is so clear. Every morning, every single day, I go through two particular books. That is Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Ask my people every single day. I go through it. You know, even when I'm in the gym, working out, I'm listening, I'm meditating. I even have books, Bibles in the gym. I stop, I go and check, I note, I highlight, I say, okay, and I can carry on. And it's important, you see, when, you, when truth, one of the things that I realize is as time goes by, you're making, you're, 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 you're disengaging yourself from as many things that don't have eternal value. As you get wiser with time, you begin to realize this thing, it won't count all. This thing, it won't count. This one will not. And you begin to loose yourself, untie yourself from things that don't have eternal value and focus and realign yourself and commit yourself to things that have eternal value. One of the marks of a fool is that he gives himself to things that don't have consequence. What does that mean? That things that don't have eternal consequence. And if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, you see that, you know, it, it brings out that watch your life 
and make sure you don't waste it. A wasted life is not a life that did not do things. A wasted life is a life that did not give itself to things that have eternal value, that will not have eternal reward. I read a few days ago at the end of a particular chapter in the book of Nehemiah. Okay, please turn with me to the book of Nehemiah. I'm just going to read. Nehemiah chapter 5, it says in verse 19, can somebody read verse 19? Nehemiah chapter 5 and verse 19. Hmm. Again, please. Hallelujah. Chapter 13 and the very last line of chapter 13. The very last line. Let me, let me actually take it from, just, just read verse 30, okay? 30 through to 31. Um, or actually, let me extend it further back. Take it from 29. Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 13 from verse 29. Yeah, do you want to read? Okay, let me read it. It says, Remember them, O my God, for they have defiled the priesthood and the promises and vows of the priests and Levites. So I purged out everything foreign and assigned tasks to the priests and Levites, making certain that each knew his work. I also made sure that the supply of wood for the altar was brought at the proper times and the first part of the harvest was collected for the priests. Then the last line says, remember this in my favor. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Remember this in my favor. Oh my God. Hallelujah. You know, Sister Onyinye um, gave a testimony about something in relation to her brother. And that, that last line says, remember this in my favor, oh my God. That, and, and it's important for us to always ask ourselves, are there enough things in my life that will be remembered in my favor? There are things that will be remembered against. But the Bible says, remember this in my favor. In, in chapter 5 verse 19 it says remember this and bless me for it. What will God remember? And what, what he remembers. Will it be in your favor? Or will it continue to work for your children's children? I spoke with somebody last week, and by the grace of God, I've had that conversation with a few people, that there are some actions you take that heaven will open accounts for your children. There are things that an individual will do. Of course, there's the other side to it as well. You see, because the Bible says that the Eli, because of something he failed to do, his actions triggered something that so grieved God that God said to Eli, because of this thing, eh, now an account of, 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 of iniquity will be opened concerning your children's children's children. That's frightening. 
And that, are, that, that and and if you really think about, it, there are things that. <laughs> Well, when you read it through, you, you, it, it makes you frightened. Because Eli failed to honor God before his children. The Bible says, you honored your children over and above me. And it says, on account of that, this will be what will happen. You know, and, and the Lord said, not only will they, once they reach the age of 35, they will drop dead. The one that is left will be begging for food. They will never have enough to fill their stomach. That, that is a tragedy. And that was simply because Eli did not do something with his children. You know? So an account was opened for his children's children's children by his actions. But on the same hand, there were also men who did certain things that opened up accounts of favor for their children's children. David's life opened even an account up to the life of Jesus. You know, so that we must think carefully about what we're using, what we're investing our lives with. Every single moment, every day is a life, is a day of investment for the glory of God. When you and I begin to think of those things, we begin to, you know what? Make choices that would, Lord, this one is not necessary. I, I, I will give my time and my energy towards X, Y, Z. You know, let me tell you what is interesting, people of God, yeah? Jeff Bezos plans to step down. How many of us know that? As the CEO of Amazon. Like Bill Gates, he said, I want to give myself to the things that really matter. What do you think he was saying when he says, I want to give himself to things that really matter? Pardon? He wants to give himself to charitable work, things that will impact lives and generations. He has made so much money. Huh? He has come to a place where he realized that making money is not the end goal of life. There is something greater than that. His wife right now, or his ex-wife, huh? almost every day she's just giving away billions. Not millions. Billions. 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 She said she has understood what the purpose of money. So many foundations, so many charities, so many things. Because she realized that anything that is not lifting up, adding value to human life, raising the quality of destinies of people, She has contributed more money than the economies of certain countries towards charitable work. Treating diseases, sicknesses, and so on. While some people from our countries are stealing money. These guys are using it to invest in malaria treatment, HIV, things that are not their concern, so to speak. Then when they pump money into many of these things in some of our countries, so people steal the money for themselves. You know. May the Lord truly have mercy upon us. Father, we ask that, and, and you know, sorry, let me just say this. Huh? You know, what is interesting is everywhere, <laughs> these guys, they don't have Jesus in their tongue. But the Spirit of God is working in their heart. 
we we have where Jesus in our tongue. But I don't as soon as I don't know, we know what is coming out from the heart. So when we say, Oh, both people don't know God, it is the works of our lives that will prove whether we really know God. Am I making sense? A man called Cornelius. The Bible says that your prayers and your arms have come up as a what? Memorial before God. And God used Cornelius' home to open up the gospel to the Gentile world. As a memorial. I pray that our lives every day by the actions, by the decisions, by the seeds that we sow, that we would open up accounts of memorial in heaven. I'm, I'm, I'm certain without a shadow of a doubt, uh, God help me, uh, that I know that there are accounts that have been opened that even my seed to the third, to the fourth, and fifth generation, eh, they will have overflow in their account. By the special grace of God, when we begin to hear and understand this truth, it will shift our priorities in life, change our desires and our pursuits. Father, we want to thank you for indeed you have been a blessing to us. As a house, we are grateful. Lord, may our lives' response be such that would continue to sound for generations to come. May a heart of gratitude fill us continually. And may thanksgiving never cease from our mouths. This is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I'm going to go quickly to um, an important topic I began two weeks back. And I want to just see if I can just round it up. But it is so crucial that um, I, I realize that I cannot leave it because we need it so much. And I pray that the young people and the different folks who are upstairs um, are able to capture or to take hold, you know, of everything that is being shared this day because it, it will shape your destiny if you're able to take hold of what I'm about to share with you now. So make sure that you take your notes, make sure that you write down um, the things that you're going to hear. Hallelujah. I, um, I want to recommend a film, okay? My, 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 the topic of what I'm dealing with is the word, uh, three key words, okay? Resilience, okay? Fortitude. And perseverance. In the Bible, a lot of times you see the two words, patience and endurance, Okay? But the key words I'm using today is resilience, okay, fortitude, and what? Perseverance. I want to recommend a film. Yeah? Can we can can you put the film on the screen for me, please? Yeah. Um, it is called The Twelfth Man. How many people have seen that? I doubt. I doubt that anybody here would have seen it before. Okay? It is titled The Twelfth Man. It's a true story. Absolutely true. Okay? Every single thing in this film is absolutely... It says that it is, it, it is so true that it sounds impossible. Okay? But I want to recommend it. In fact, I felt to myself that maybe one day one of these evenings, a Friday night, okay, that we will just come together and actually watch it. Um, but it's something that 
in your own time, in your own space, go home today. It's on YouTube, okay? And actually watch The Twelfth Man. And it will give you an insight into the message that I'm actually sharing with you today. I hope you've taken note of it. How many people are going to watch it? Praise God. Please watch it, okay? Please watch it. Watch it and learn from it, okay? When your life and the purpose of your life, note what I'm about to say to you. When your life and the purpose of your life has no consequence. I'm saying exactly how the Holy Spirit said it to me. Any and everything will stop you. Have you written it? What did I say? When your what? When your life and the purpose of your life has no consequence, any and everything will stop you. Who understands what that means? Who understands what that statement means? Jude, what does it mean? You're an intelligent man. What does it mean? Yes. There's only one Jude here. After that is Judas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Okay, okay. Well, that's, 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 that's close. Okay. Hallelujah. And Edith. Okay, okay, praise God. Okay, um, yes, Daniel, thank you, Auntie. Yes, Daniel, what, what do you think it means? Auntie, don't be jealous, give me a microphone, yeah? Hallelujah. Amen. When, when, you have a, um, when you have no consequences, you won't learn from it, and um, everything... And everything will be able to stop you because there's no you've had no consequences and you haven't learned from your actions before. Amen. Amen. I can tell that's what daddy and mommy are saying to you. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can tell that's what you hear at home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, let me explain this. Okay. So much. Yes, Hallelujah. Sir. You see, this, this is an important truth. When, when your life and your purpose in life has no consequence, there's no, there's no consequence for your failure, eh? anything can stop you. Anything will make you quit. Are you listening? Huh? Quitting becomes easy because there is no consequence, there's no value to your success. Is this making sense? Okay, now, this, you see, there is, if you watch this film, okay, Paul the Apostle, because, who knows why he needed to get to Rome? Who knows why? Why, why was it necessary for Paul to stand before Caesar? Hello? Antitino? Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen. It was not an accident that Paul needed to stand before Caesar. Caesar at that time 
was the leading authority in the whole world. And for him to stand before Caesar and testify before Caesar, after Caesar had heard the gospel, Rome became the center for advancing the gospel. Do you know that? In the whole world. So that him going to Rome and persevering in spite of everything, going all the way and, and passing through Malta and going through prison and everything was because when he gave his testimony before Caesar and they heard him, even though he was killed and so on, but his testimony never died. It stayed in the heart of the courts where his testimony was heard. Eventually, even though Rome did several things to try and, you know, kill Christians and everything. But after a while, they began to say to themselves, what is even this thing that this man is talking about? Now, Jesus, the Bible says, for the joy that was what? Set before him. He did what? Endured the cross. What was what, what was the joy that was set before him? Anybody know? Pardon? That, that, true. But what, what was it? What was the main, what was the joy that he looked forward to? Yes, salvation, but let me explain what it is, okay? It was when all of us will be with him. In glory. So that his not making it beyond the cross meant that all of us will be condemned eternally. So that there was, he, he understood the colossal, how many of us know the term, the word colossal? Yeah? The, the colossal consequence of him failing. It, it, in fact, it is an unimaginable consequence. So that he could not afford to fail. And that is why you find that when people feel that their, that their presence or their, uh, or their absence has no value or consequence, they're not motivated to overcome obstacles and challenges. I, I remember several times when, when, when JJ was, was much younger, okay, when, even when Pastor Nicole was sick and she was not feeling very well, when she was having to, you know, sort herself out and all sorts of things and so on. But because at that stage of his life, I couldn't help. Eh? In spite of how sick she was, she would still get up at whatever time of the night to breastfeed. irrespective of how she was feeling, how, how much hay fever was troubling her, how much cold, how much whatever. And me, when NC troubled me, I would take medication. They say, because you're breastfeeding, there are things you cannot take. So she will endure not taking the medication and be enduring the sickness but still be breastfeeding him. Upon bleeding nipples, upon, you know, also, and even she'll be crying. But she'll be feeding him. That's why when he is rude or misbehaves towards her, eh, the way I deal with him, I say, because you don't know what this woman suffered for, for you. Are you listening? Let me just say this very quickly. Fathers, eh? you must learn to guard the honor of your wife by how you tackle your children when they, how they relate to their mothers. Are you listening? Yeah? Very important. You cannot watch your children dishonor or disrespecting your spouse eh? and you don't say anything. When you're silent, eh? you have consented. You must learn to protect the glory and the honor 
of your wife before your children's heart. And of course, it's vice versa. Are you listening? Yeah? But very important for fathers to do that. Don't say that's between them and their mother. Eh? When you do that, eh? you are destroying the children and you're ruining your home. It's amazing how many times fathers just feel, just them, let them, that's their own business. No, you must, there are things you must not tolerate, you must not accept it. Even heavy breathing, don't tolerate it. Dishonor is not just by words. It can even be done in silence. Hello? Amen. Okay, let me move further. Okay, so watch this. If you don't raise children or if you don't raise a generation that understand that there is value and consequence, there are huge implications for their life and their destiny. Are you listening? Eh? One of the key things that all parents must do is to give their children a sense of value, destiny and purpose for their lives. It is the clear sense of destiny, purpose, and value for your life that will cause you to develop resilience. That will develop fortitude and develop perseverance. Resilience is the ability to take all sorts of issues and hand, whatever in spite of all the knocks that you take. Fortitude is developing strength of spirit, soul, and body. And to be able to handle adversity. And then perseverance means pressing on and pressing forward in spite of everything. How many of us have read the book, Audacity of Hope? Anybody? <laughs> huh? Okay, it, it's a book written by Obama. Okay, it, it's a book written by Obama. Audacity of hope is that in spite of everything, are you listening? Huh? I dared to hope, believe, and succeed. One of the things Obama said was that he realized that. His success, are you listening, was not Obama's success, but would open up the, he, said, he realized that if I fail, it's not just me that fails. You know what? Many generations and the black community would have failed in America. And as a result of his success, it opened up a pathway. That is why people like Kamala Harris can be where she is today. Paul the Apostle, the book of Timothy, how important and critical is your life that you cannot afford to fail? How important is the task that God has called you to. That your failure is no longer just about your failure, but the failure of generations. How many people here will say that if I fail, it will impact generations? How many people will say that my success is no longer about my success, but about the success of generations who are running behind me? Paul said something in 2 Timothy Turn with me to 2 Timothy and chapter 2. It says from verse 3. Okay, let me, let me. I read from verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 3. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. It says, take with me your share of the hardships and suffering 
which you are called to what? Which you are called to what? Endure as a good first class soldier of Christ Jesus. Okay? It says, no soldier when in service gets entangled in the enterprises of civilian life. His aim is to satisfy and please the one who enlisted him. And if anyone enters competitive games, he is not crowned unless he competes lawfully, fairly, according to the rules laid down. It is the hard-working farmer who labors to produce who must be the first partaker of the fruits. Think over these things I am saying. Understand them and grasp their application. For the Lord will grant you full insight and understanding in everything. From verse 8, it says, Constantly keep in mind Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as risen from the dead, as a prophesied king descended from David, according to the good news, the gospel that I preach. For that gospel, are we together from verse 9? Are we together? Let's read together this. It's important. It says what? For that gospel, I am suffering affliction and even wearing chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained or in prison. Next line, verse 10. Therefore, I am ready to persevere and stand my ground with patience and endure everything. For what? The sake of the elect, God's chosen so that they too may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with the reward of eternal glory. Hallelujah. <coughs> I don't think I can make it to service. I, can't, I don't think I'll make it to work next week. I just, I just, I just felt myself sneezing. <coughs> Excuse me. I think, I think I'm going down with something. No, you are not going down with something. You're going down. Hello. You're not going down with anything. Are, are you listening? Eh? Any little sneeze, any little thing. You know why? It's because where you need to be has no consequence for anything in your life or anybody. Let, let me ask you a question, yeah? This is just to tell you how this application is, okay? How many years have you been here, Aunt Edith? Are you sure it's not more? You look like furniture, eh? I, I thought you'd been here forever. Eh? No? Oh, okay. I think some of us are furniture here. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Who has been here for up to 10 years? Raise up your hand. <clears throat> Praise God. Okay, let's just say in the last, say, okay, six years, okay? Even in the last four years, okay? This is, watch this. Have you ever, in the last four years, so to speak, let's just take four years or three years, okay? Have you ever not seen Joshua in the praise worship team playing either drums when he was near his age? He started playing the drums when he was eight years old. And today he plays the keys and everything else. How old are you now? 14, going 15. So between the age of eight and 15 is roughly seven years, isn't it? Yeah. Has anybody never seen him? You know, you see somebody so much, you don't even realize you see them anymore. Yeah? But well, let me ask you a question. Does it mean that in all those years, he's never been ill? You know why? Because many times when he's ill or he's unwell, there's only a few people that will notice. Eh? I will take whatever you need to patch up eh? because your absence has too much consequence. Oh, yeah, take this drink, eh? Don't worry, it will be well in Jesus' name. I pray. Take this one. God bless you. I hold it and I'm running and I'm holding the water. Just say, It is well. Don't worry. Carry on, carry on. Eh? It is well. He said, That in my head. I said, It is well in Jesus' name. Carry on. Just just make sure. And I tell him every time, eh? 
Your life is too consequential for any little thing, even big thing, to derail you. Many a times you and I know it, somebody will call in sick from work. But you know what? They realize I must still cook for the children. I must, isn't it? I must still do this. I must still go and pick them up from school. I must still go. You gather strength because you know that this thing is, and nobody else will do it. But the moment you think, no, somebody else will do it. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Are you, let me tell you what will happen. Everything will easily defeat you. So at the number one principle, watch this, for developing, bef you, you cannot teach resilience unless, that's why Paul said, you see what, therefore I'm ready to persevere and stand my ground with patience and endure what everything for the sake of what? The elect, God's chosen. So that they too may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with the reward of what? Eternal glory. When the, when the number of lives that are tied to your life, you know, when it's just you, you see, there are things that you could do as a single person. Go and ask anybody who has, become, who has now gotten married and now has children. Eh? You can't just phone in to work and say, I'm not making it. Because you now realize, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me even take you further. Eh? When you run and own your own business, uh, are you with me? Eh? And it's you that we have to go and open the shop. Are you listening? Eh? Even when you are not feeling well, you will still gather strength to go and open the shop. You will stay there. You'll be taking your medication. You'll be taking everything. Because you know what? There's not a one that uh, I'll call my employer. There's no employer to call. It is you that's the employer and employee at the same time. That is why many people cannot run personal, real businesses because they don't have the fortitude, the strength of what it takes to do so. Because it's easy. I'm not feeling well today. Are we together? Yeah. Sometimes I say, run your own business tomorrow, and I will see you cannot have this record of sick leave. Your business will fold up. That's the end. All many of these Asian shops, you see, I went to the man up there. When I went there one day, he was blowing his nose. I said, Papa, the one opposite Sainsbury's, you know, he never has his son there. The man was not well, but guess what? He was still taking his time gently, doing what he had to do. Because, guess what? It's his shop. If he doesn't open it, nobody will come and open it for him. So because of that, he receives strength to do what he needs to do. Because there is a consequence. There is a huge loss that will take place if he does not succeed. And the Lord began to show me that if your life has no consequence, if, your, if, you, if, the, if the purpose of your life does not have critical value for the future and for the life of others, any little thing, you just, that's it, you quit. You give up. You call it a day. And so number one, raising children or building a home that you realize that has consequence. Can you put on the screen for me the things that I'd send through? Num number one is... I'm, I'm moving on. Actually, I'm, I'm on number three now. 
so resilience, fortitude, and mental and emotional strength is a function of purpose. A purpose that is greater than the present, than the present, and greater than your personal life. That is greater than the present and greater than your personal life. That means that if you don't have a purpose that is greater than now, meeting of now, meeting the present needs of now, if you don't have a purpose that is greater than your personal life, you will quit easily when the challenges of life come. Number four point with regards to resilience. Resilience what? Three things. Resilience what? Fortitude and perseverance. Is the establishment of positive, strong, and secure relationships that creates a solid sense of identity. That creates a solid sense of identity. Positive, strong and secure relationships. That creates a solid sense of identity. What does that mean? It means. The environment or the family. Please, let me say something. It'll be hard for anybody to see that. Yeah, Always use a blank slate when showing text like that. Yeah, So just take it off and then use a blank slate so it's easy to see. Okay? Hallelujah. Okay, just... Okay. Watch this. Okay? So just remove, remove that from the screen. Yeah, take it off. Okay? And just, just flow with me. Hear this. The quality of relationships. What do you have? What do you have with you? Read it. Read what I gave you. Secure what? I said positive, strong, and secure relationships. Okay. That what? Creates what? A solid sense of identity. Okay. The quality of the relationships, positive, strong relationships, security in the home helps to create in children and in people a solid sense of identity. And that sense of identity will determine how solid, how strong, how secure you will be. And that is why in an environment where there is constant friction and there's constant anxiety about whether or not things will you know let me put it this way in a home where children are never sure whether it, mom and dad are going to be together next week where nobody's sure what is going on it creates insecurity and creates insecure identity the strength of a child's identity is rooted in the stability of the home. So you cannot raise strong, confident children who are able to endure hardship, endure the pressures of life when the root of their tree of their tree is on unstable ground. Do you know that it is not how big a tree is that makes it secure? It is how well attached to the ground and at the ground where it is. That's why once there's earthquake, everything falls. That is why foundation is what determines strength. Are you listening? Yeah? So when in, in, in every environment, 
when the relationships around individuals are insecure, when there is conflict, when there is constant anxiety, when either mom is constantly leaving home or dad is constantly leaving or threatening to leave home, you appear for one week, disappear for three weeks, appear and say, if you watch those children, if it affects their spirit. They cannot be confident. They cannot move with their heads high up and everything. Because this, a, a child's confidence is determined by the security of what is behind them, where they're coming from. Then they can lift up their heads. And it also creates in them this stability. That is why in early years, we learn that number one, the principles of the EYFS, it says number one is that everybody's unique. Praise God. Yeah? But the second principle is this, positive what? Relationships. Third principle, enabling environment. If you remove positive relationships, okay, you have disabled the environment that is critical for success and progress for a child. Are we listening? Next, I'm just going to move on quickly. Okay. Good, creating, building good, strong character. At an attitude of gratitude and integrity of heart. Built upon strong scriptural foundation. Good, strong character. An attitude of gratitude and integrity of heart built on strong scriptural foundation okay what does that mean it means it is better to build character than to build gift The foundation for long-term success of any gift is solid, strong character. When you are more committed to giving your children an education, academic education, than giving them a character education, you'll be willing to sell their soul. Let me explain further. Okay? When JJ was going to go to secondary school, okay, we were looking at two different paths for him. There's a school called the Purcell, okay. The Purcell is a school for the gifted and talented students, okay, um, especially in the area of music, arts, and drama, and so on. Their school fees is thirty-two thousand pounds a year, but they give scholarships on the condition that you get distinction, okay at grade five level of music. Their patrons are, um, what's his name again? Maybe, what's, this guy that's Rocket Man, Elton John, okay? Um, Prince Philip and all the royalty and everything, yeah? Those schools, you, you have to, I mean, that's, that's a Purcell school. Okay. People who end up being at the top conservators of music in this country go through that school. Okay. But you have to have distinction at least grade five in at least two instruments to be able to get in and get a scholarship. And then you'd end up paying just about a thousand pounds a month. The rest is covered for. Are, are we listening? But when you go through the list of their patrons, I realize that many of them are people that play for the other team. Are you with me? Huh? And their lifestyle is God, God help us. Am I making sense? Yeah. They're the ones who come regularly into those schools to give them talks, to give them encouragement, to speak to them, 
train them, take them through. They get all these people from different places. By the time we went through that, JJ did the exams and he got his distinction and everything. And he will be able to go. But of course, the distance also means that he'll be in boarding school over there. And the Holy Spirit asked us, you want to lose this child. Now, if we're thinking of just a gift and career, are you with me? Yeah? Then we say, ah, go there, go scholarship. When I come, I'll be boasting. You know how, as Africans, we like to do that. Where is your child going to? Oh, <laughs> my child is in um, Purcell. Eh? Meanwhile, Elton John will be grooming him. By the time Elton John finishes grooming you, you know where you will be. You know? No, no, but let me tell you, Elton John is one of the most gifted and talented musicians in the world. Yeah? Ha. Huh. And that guy's voice has weight, even in Buckingham Palace. Are, are you listening? Yeah? But the Lord had to speak to us what is it that is most important? Is it the character of Christ on the inside? Or is it the gift that matters? There are many times, by the time they go to those sort of boarding schools and everything, by the time they come back, they will come, he will come back with their boyfriend. Are, are you with me? Then when I want to say something, he will, he will be asking me, where? Which chapter and verse? And, and you discover that, and the Lord said, in these formative years, your voice by the word of God is more critical to his destiny than the gift and the talent in his life. So guess what, my friend? Go where we shall be seeing you every day. Where you'll be hearing my voice every day. Where we shall have Bible study, praise, worship, prayer meeting every day. And that was what made that decision for us. Otherwise, the current of this world will just drag them away. Before you know what is happening, you know what? You discover you've lost your child. And they don't have what it takes to be able to resist the demonic current of this world in their spirit. How many of us remember, you know, you know Stormzy? Yeah. Stormzy's producer asked me, please, can, can I take your son so he'll be working for us? <laughs> I, because the guy came here and he was watching and he said, you know what, this is a very rare gift. Can he? But I realized that the circle, one of them said to me, but you know, in that environment, if you don't mind. One of them was promising me that he would look after him, protect him. But you see, the truth is this. Yeah? Many times we have become so caught up with gift that we fail to understand the importance of character. Daniel was gifted, but his character was greater than his gift. Joseph was gifted, a man who had dreams and who could interpret dreams. But watch the life of Joseph. His character was greater than his gift. You know why? Because when gift fails, you need character to keep you standing. How many of us know that it is not gift you use to hold a, a home? It is character that is used to build and to sustain a home. Your gift will not raise children. It is your character and Christ on the inside that will help you to raise children with resilience. Am I making sense? Esther, beautiful, but it was not her beauty that made the way for her. It was her what? Character. And so it is critical to build character. Because character will sustain them when everything else in life 
fails around them. Character is the steel, the metal behind the flesh. You know, your human body has bone inside. Yeah? But it's flesh outside, but it's the bone on the inside. Am I making sense? Your muscles are underneath your skin. And it is character that keeps men. Even when the f- character is foundation. The Bible says when the whirlwind has blown, what happens? The wicked are nowhere to be found. But what the righteous have an everlasting what? Foundation. Let me close with this. A woman called Ruth in the Bible. Are we together? There was a time when, interestingly enough, she lost her husband. Okay, that was Naomi was her mother-in-law. Okay, many times, many of us give up once our gift fails. Many times, when that which you have built your life upon, maybe a business, people commit suicide, people do all sorts of things, and will turn around for all sorts of issues and so on. Yeah, but saints of God, please listen. When a man has strength of character on the inside. The Bible says, though the what fig tree does not blossom and the field crops don't succeed. It says, yet, are you listening? Will I rejoice in the God of my what? Salvation. What does that mean? It means that even if everything in life fails, people of God, please hear this. Your character will keep you going strong. You will have resilience on the inside beyond when the gifts of life fail. That's what those that Habakkuk chapter 3 is actually saying. My prayer is this, that we would raise children. Are you listening? Homes where character of strength or strength of character is built on the inside. Because education, money, all these things, there are times when they will fail. But when you have built character on the inside of them, it will help them to remain what? Resilient. That no matter what is going on, they will remain what? Standing. I pray that the power of the truth of God's word will what? Keep us going. This issue of resilience, fortitude, and what? Perseverance is critical for everyday life. Too many people are developing mental health because they can't cope anymore. I pray in the name of Jesus that our children, you know what, they will develop strength on the inside. Hallelujah. So no matter what happens, no matter what happens, let's read it together. Let's stand up together and read this. Okay? Let's read together. Give. Hallelujah. It says what? Though the what? The fig tree does not blossom. There is no fruit on the vine. Though the product of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the stores and there are no cattle in the stores, yet what? I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the victorious God of my salvation. Put the last verse. Put the last verse. Verse verse 19. Okay? Let's read together. It says what? The Lord God is my what? Strength. My what? Personal bravery and my what invincible and not please not invisible. Invincible means that nothing can 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 break this down. Nothing can defeat. Hallelujah! He says he makes my feet what like hinds feet, and will make me to what walk, not stand still in terror, but to walk and make spiritual what progress upon my high places of what trouble suffering or responsibility hallelujah praise god amen and that is your portion in jesus name hallelujah that when they're saying this and he said you know what i no matter what happens i have an invincible army on the inside there is strength on the inside hallelujah amen the economy of the nation does not determine my strength because i have god on the inside to hold me I want you to just lift up your hand before God and say, God, hallelujah. I receive resilience. I receive what? Fortitude. 
and I receive the power of perseverance to be able to keep on keeping on, keep on making progress, keep on advancing, keep on pressing forward in spite of everything. Hallelujah. Amen. You will not break down. You will not fall. You will not collapse. You will not crumble. The Bible says, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet his covenant of peace shall be yours in the precious name of Jesus. He says that they that trust in the Lord shall be like what? Mount Zion that shall not be moved. You will not be moved. Hallelujah. Because the Lord himself is your strength, your shield, and the keeper of your soul in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Just bless God right now and give him praise. Hallelujah. Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you. I have resilience. Hallelujah. I have strength. I have a purpose. Hallelujah. I will not crumble. I will not break down in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. We hope that it has been a blessing to you. For counseling, prayers or to fellowship with us, visit us at RCCG ICC, rear of 31 to 35 High Road, behind Nat West Bank, Romford, Essex, RM6, 6QJ, United Kingdom.